All right. Good evening, gentlemen and ladies. Are you powerful? I bet you are, because tonight we are going to explore some powerful projects, right? Tonight we did something special. We looked at startups and hardware startups in particular. And we invited all of you here just to learn from some of the table shows and also from the panel. It's a fantastic opportunity to connect with the creative startup communities. These are inventors that are already with a prototype and trying to accelerate their project to get it into market. I'm Connor. I work for a company called Mojis and we make these little microphones that turn the vibrations of any object you stick it to into a musical instrument. Hi everybody, my name's uh, Anwar. I work uh, for the product MyScope. Uh, it's a digital stethoscope. Uh, we're currently at the stage where we're looking for uh, funding for, ma for mass manufacture. My name's Carl Thomas. I'm founder of a company called Audio Wings. At Audio Wings, we're developing an audio system which broadly understands who we are and where we are to distribute relevant content straight to our ears. My name is Jonathan. I, uh, I'm just, you know, another one of all of you, an entrepreneur uh, who is just trying to embark on a big mission in a world full of opportunities and needs. Uh, this basically led me to take a flight from Tel Aviv to London uh, almost two years ago to build Kano with my co-founders and we're trying to enable a world where anyone, anywhere, can make and play with technology. Uh, hi, I'm Anastasia. I look after Indiegogo in the UK. Uh, Indiegogo is the largest global crowdfunding platform. Hi, uh, my name is Chabat Urdeshi. I'm an industrial designer and the founder of Deskaboard. Hi, my name is Lawrence Campbell-Cook. I'm the founder and CEO of PaveGen. So PaveGen is a flooring tile that converts your footsteps into electricity. We generate seven watts of energy per footstep, and it stores that power to power applications in the city. I, I think ideas are, are a wonderful thing, but they're not the main thing. Um, I think an established background on why you're embarking on, on, on building a new product or delivering a new service, um, one that engages you personally and you feel strongly about. It's a bit idealistic when you, know, you refer to words like passion, but I think it's, uh, it's what drives a lot of us to, to do that. Hopefully, most people are not driven by making a lot of money because in most cases, in most cases startups fail. Um, to me, the biggest inspiration was actually to be in uh, 12 hours, for 12 hours in a room in London while I took a flight from uh, Tel Aviv for 24 hours to be here while I was on a reserve duty in the Israeli Defense Forces. Teaching windsurf uh, since, since 10 years and it's, it's a sport but it's really really hard to learn and I saw those little guys who never ever grabbed a, a windsurf sail and uh, just stand on this board uh, which is not sink and on the ground you can't feel the waves because there are no waves and uh, just got the first cool experience and see the smile on the face and uh, I said, okay, I have to make it. There is no way back. <laughs> so for emojis, the idea was pretty simple one that Bruno came up with while he was in grad school. But the realization that it could become a product came much later when he had just put up a video of him playing some bus stops and trees with this little microphone just to show off to his peers in college. But then after a week of being away on holiday, he came back and found that it had tons of views and loads of people going, where can I buy this? I want one. So after that, the kind of penny dropped that, hey, this could become a natural product. So that's when he started finding the right people to go to to make it into a viable company. But it did require a Kickstarter to get started. And beyond that, that's when the investors came by with good press. So yeah. Every hardware guy wishes he was a software guy. And every software guy wishes he was a hardware guy or, or girl. Um, I think that the only downside is when you look at valuations of exits, we all beat ourselves up as hardware people because it's only like when Nest had that exit that suddenly it made hardware sexy again. And I was, we were all rejoicing. And suddenly investors are looking again at putting cash into funds that are looking at, at hardware businesses. But I think that the trouble that happens is you need, at early stages, you need a bit more money because you've got to pay your manufacturers. At later stages, you need more working capital. When I'm speaking to hardware startups, I, c I need them to be as close to ready to jump and go as possible. So if somebody comes to me and says that they want to crowdfund a prototype, um, 
realize this is being filmed, uh, I'd normally kind of say, go away, you're not ready yet. Because people don't want to crowdfund a prototype. You need to kind of hustle to get to that point. So you're, you've got a working prototype, you've got a looks like prototype, and you know your minimum order quantity. You kind of know, you, you know, you've got cost of goods, you've figured out whether you're well, you know, your pricing structure, whether you're top-down pricing or whether you're gonna do a market pricing. You've thought about your manufacturing because all of that helps you run a really successful campaign. And it kind of helps from all of the issues that you're gonna face, because you're gonna face them anyway. Like, hardware is horrendously hard, as all of these people can, um, can explain. But the more you have that kind of prepared, um, the easier it will be. Okay, thank you very much. If you have more questions, ask them at the bar. I'd like to thank all of our panel very much for their time.